Okay, so, after a bit of messing around, if I unplug either one of these and connect it to my spark tester, which is just a spare coil and a spark plug and a ground lead, I get spark from both of them. But as if I unplug it while it's running, it doesn't change anything. Unplug that one, which is number five, uh, the engine changes noticeably and then shortly starts backfiring in the, or just firing off fuel in the exhaust. So I'm wondering, I've got spark but no fuel from these two injectors. Uh, I don't know what the other bank's like. Like I said, that cat converter wasn't melted so it wouldn't surprise me in the least if it's uh, not working. Or well, sorry, if it's working alright, it's not faulting. I really need a good code reader for this and the one that I got was just a dirt cheapie and even the CD that came with it was damaged. I can't even install the thing. It's not even a USB one so without active Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in my hands I can't really use it. I'm curious about that ECM. I might pull that ECM out and just open it up and we'll see if it has any burnt switching transistors. Apart from that I don't know. It could be two blocked injectors. These do suffer injector uh, blockages and things. I might also do a leak down test. I'll also pull these, pull these out now that it's been running for a bit and just see if they're wet with fuel. But if they were wet with fuel I'd expect to see it going out the exhaust and hear it backfiring all the time. Like I'd pull that off and it'd backfire. Or it'd backfire all the time regardless of spark. Interesting. I'm getting closer. I don't know if you... The fact that there's blue max on there tells me you might not have put new gaskets on it. It might just be the old ones and some sealant. I've got new ones waiting for me at Repco, so I'll get them when I uh, do this. I'll pick them up tomorrow. G'day folks. Uh, welcome to part two of uh, Vicky's troubleshooting. <laughs> well, troubleshooting Vicky, I should say. Yeah, she's a nice little car. Looks good. Well equipped, but... It's going to be fun fixing her. It'll be something really silly like, well, this. That little coupling down there is very loose and it's on one of the main vacuum lines to the plenum chamber. Hmm. It goes down to the valley down the bottom there between the cylinders. So I'm guessing it's a crankcase. Well, oh, there's crankcase breathers up here. I've got no idea what that does. Either way, I'm destined to pull all this off. I've already got the set of O-rings for the uh, intake plenum on order. Well, actually they're waiting at the auto parts store. I'll pick them up tomorrow. Um, there's only two bolts holding the throttle body on, which is odd, to say the least. That one hasn't been removed, though. It's still got a cap on it. It's like a plastic uh, security cap or something stuck over the end of the thread. Hmm. Yeah. I'm guessing it's supposed to be like that, which is unusual. I'd expect there to be four bolts, considering there are four holes. But I can always hear this hissing sound. Not so much air hissing through an IAC valve, but hissing from the outside. So, since these two cylinders aren't firing properly, that plug there was clean and somewhat wet. That one there was sooty and had been firing, but disconnecting the coil didn't do anything. Disconnecting that coil resulted in a very obvious miss and backfiring or through the exhaust. I was dumping fuel into the exhaust, so either I've got blocked injectors, injectors that aren't being fired properly by the PCM, or a serious vacuum leak that's resulting in the fuel and air being pulled up further into the manifold, probably being pulled up into another cylinder. I'm not too sure. It's uh, interesting. I haven't done an awful lot of work on modern cars, but the principle's still there. It's still an internal combustion engine. They just got more, more modern junk on it, on them. <laughs> That's basically the same as what the RAV4s have, except they're on the, they're inverted. The IOCs on the bottom, and uh, yeah, it's got a throttle position sensor, an idle, idle air control valve, and a uh, butterfly valve main throttle plate which is nice and clean, it has been cleaned, but I'm curious about that down there, that's not held together by anything, that's a crankcase breather, yeah that's perished and cooked, 
you can be replaced for sure. Yuck. <laughs> It'll be something stupid like that that's causing all these problems. Though I'd imagine I'd have uneven firing on all cylinders if that was the problem. And disconnecting the math meter while it's running, uh, RPMs increase a little bit but the uh, missing still continues so I don't think it's a uh, a combined fuel injection issue, I think it's isolated to these two cylinders, number four and number six. Okay, with the inlet off, I can see that the seals have actually been done. Somebody's blue maxed it at one point, but that was a uh, bit misleading because that's been uh, replaced. There are actual new seals in there. So. Unless the intake's cracked, and I will do a thorough inspection of it, I'll disconnect these vacuum lines and do a thorough inspection. Something else wrong in here. I like the way these are all cable tied on, the injector plugs. I'm guessing there were problems with them coming off. Yeah, interesting. I'm be careful I don't disturb anything, I don't want to drop debris down the intake. I'm going to get a flashlight and just shine it down there and see what's going on inside. <laughs> compression wise, my compression tester stem is too fat to fit down the bottom of the plug hole and actually screw into the threads. So I'm going to have to make one out of an old spark plug. I do have some old spark plugs of the same size that fit this engine. Not iridium ones, it doesn't really matter, I just want the threads and uh, I'll silver solder it onto a brass stem and machine it down as thin as I can so that it gets down in there because these iridium plugs have a thread length of about that much my compression tester has about that much and the body of it's much fatter than the iridium plug so it gets to the bottom of the plastic or metal aluminium tube and it gets stuck it doesn't actually thread in but I can tell by cranking it with a plug out there's an obvious miss on compression and then when I put the plugs back in it cranks evenly so unlikely that it's a blown head gasket but again I want to know for sure so I'm going to uh, endeavour to put a uh, compression tester on her. Again if I, I had, a, had a running and actually was able to reach under the manifold and unplug each one of these coils that creates a very obvious miss and backfiring as it dumps fuel down the exhaust. It's only these two, number four and number six. So I might even pop that PCM out before it gets too dark and open it up, have a look, see if the um, switching transistors have gone pop, which they are known to. It's kind of interesting that the fuel rail connectors are all cable tied down though, even down under here, but all of them, they're all cable tied on. And what the hell do they wrap this loom with? That's not loom tape, that's like gaffer tape. That's kind of nasty. I bet it's an American engine. It's a Japanese car, Japanese built Escape. It's a Mazda built one, but the engine's a Duratec 30, so it's probably an American made engine. Maybe that's what they use over there. I have seen notes on forums about chafed wiring causing misfires. So again, that's something I'm gonna go through. But the biggest thing was this vacuum hose down here, right where it connects down onto the valley, right in the centre. It's all degraded, it's all falling apart. And since it, it doesn't even need this many joins, I could rerun that with just straight parallel hose. I might just remake that whole lot because it was really loose. I've redone that bit there, but even up here it's starting to get cracked and degrade, degraded. Hmm. Very interesting. There's also a fuel pressure modulator which is connected into all this stuff on here. Up there, that's fuel pressure modulation, I believe. So that needs to be made 100% uh, vacuum tight. Uh, yeah. That's EGR, exhaust gas recirculation. Kind of irrelevant at this stage since there's no cat converters or anything. I might as well just. Uh, Oh, I don't know if I can cap that off because it's got a sensor on it. It might tell that it's been uh, tampered with. Ah oh, well, it's all good fun.
learning experience, that's for sure. This is my most modern car. This is the most modern car I've ever owned. The RAV4s are easy to work on compared with this. <laughs> At least it's not up too high. I can easily get to the uh, engine and everything. It's quite easy to get to everything, but again, I don't think I'd want to be doing cylinder heads on it. Okay, so I'm going over the uh, inlet manifold assembly. And I found the EGR, exhaust gas recirculation device. It was bolted in there, but it was kind of wiggling around. And since there's virtually no, well, the, the O-ring's been stuck in with the uh, Blue Max. There's a huge vacuum leak, air leak, right there. So right now I'm just going through my box of rubber O-rings and bushings and things and just seeing what I can uh, shove in there and just make the damn thing seal up and then put a blanking plate over here to prevent uh, exhaust gas recirculation from working altogether. At least that way if it does throw codes because EGR isn't working I can just uh, unbolt that flange, pull the copper washer out, uh, this little gadget here, pull that out and it'll work again. I'm not going to actually rip the whole system out. I mean, legally I believe I just need one cat converter that works, like the mid-body one, put a big high flow cat in the uh, single piece tailpipe, but the down, downpipe cats or the manifold cats essentially aren't necessary. So that'll work. It's fairly thick, but as long as it compresses it'll uh, seal up quite nicely. That's all I'm really concerned about. I'll see if I've got something half that thickness, which I might. Yeah. Two bolts seems to be the standard. There's no sign of a bolt ever being in these other holes. And there's a thick gasket on the throttle body, but I'll still take the throttle body off, give it another good clean, and make sure that that gasket is sealing properly and that the, there are no cracks around the housing. Because fairly intricate piece of plastic work, a lot of welded weld lines and potential places for cracking but it's just odd that the vacuum leak's only affecting, assuming it's a vacuum leak, it's only affecting two cylinders not all of them. So yeah, I don't really know. Hmm. Modern cars, they can be a bit of fun. But someone's just gone to town on that with the Blue Max. Look at that, what a mess. Okay, so the EGR is uh, dealt with. The idle air control works fine. Bit of a mess of uh, Blue Max on top of the uh, housing, but again, it was sealed 100%, so that can go back on. Throttle body, again, I took it off. The seal on the front there is really good. It's going to do its job just fine. Definitely not a problem up this end. Uh, I'd say it's either an injection issue a ECU issue, possibly a O2 sensor on that bank telling it to lean it out. Kind of odd because it's only leaning out two cylinders, not three. But yeah, getting there. Fixing the main vacuum leaks are the main problem. The owner did well by replacing these main seals here, but there were other leaks which weren't uh, addressed. Probably didn't even know to look for them. I looked online about vacuum leaks and things and all it says is replace the manifold seals. There's nothing about going after other hoses. It was just by chance that I wiggled that uh, crankcase ventilation one that comes off the centre of the valley over the, uh, well it's not over the camshaft, camshafts are on the heads, but if it was a, a push rod engine it'd be right over the top of the camshaft. It's just right in the centre of the valley. And that one was horribly loose. Like that was a major vacuum leak. So we might get some improvement from that, but I don't know if I'll get those two cylinders to work again just on that repair. Um, again, I'm going to make a compression testing tool so that I can compression test the cylinders that aren't working. And I will also uh, yeah, look at other electronic things. I can't actually pulse test the coils because I don't have a digital scope. I do have an analog scope, but apparently the pulses aren't, well, I don't know, I was just looking online and it said an analog scope like this will not accurately display the pulses from the uh, PCM, so I don't know. 
It's uh, an interesting little problem because I can get a coil to fire if I just connect it to ground and sit it on top of the rocker cover and uh, connect it up. It'll sit there and just tick away. So it's probably just a, a uh, fueling issue, Block, blocked injectors and that sort of thing. You know, usual. I can get back here. Hmm. Good reinforced nylon plastic. It's a, I think it's glass reinforced nylon. Plastics are pretty good for this sort of thing. They're very light, very strong, as long as they're made properly and welded properly. So, yeah. If there's a crack in this, well, I've got no idea where it is. <laughs> or how to fix it and find it. Okay, well, I haven't made a uh, compressor testing tool yet, but just for the hell of it I thought I'd pull the ECU out and I can see, it looks like a like a water mark, a tide mark in the uh, connector there. I wonder if it's been hit with a gurney high pressure cleaner at one point. Certainly an old one, it's been there a while. So yeah, I'm going to open it up. The car's very clean for a Western Australian car. Most WA cars I've seen are covered in red dust. Just red dust and oil and everything, it just makes a mess. This little escape is very clean. So, yeah, the fact that I can see a watermark in the bottom of the connector there tells me something might have gotten in here. And these ECUs are known for failing anyway, so <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me in the least if it's just gone belly up on its own. I'm definitely not getting uh, fire on uh, cylinders four and six, but the next step's gonna be making a compression testing tool and actually compression testing the cylinders. If they pass compression testing, then I'll be uh, looking at electronics probably. If this isn't obviously blown, I might buy a uh, replacement ECU. They can be had fairly cheap, so I'm not too concerned about that, but I don't wanna buy one if, that, if I don't have to. Oh, it's the uh, Escape's little brain box. Nothing, obvious, nothing obviously blown. Very well potted, regardless of the moisture that's gotten into the connector, and nothing bad's happened on the uh, business side of it. Very simple. A lot of semiconductors, but that's about it, really. <laughs> You've got six switching transistors there. Three there, three there. Yeah, not too sure. Some Intel chips, Motorola chips, a lot of Motorola actually. I think they all are. Yeah, most of the semiconductors are made by Motorola. Hmm. I don't know, I've got no way of testing this. I'm going to have to get this car to a uh, friend and get him to uh, scan it with a tool. We'll find out what happens uh, after that. I've got a feeling it's going to be an injection issue now. Fuel injectors, bad, bad injectors or blocked injectors. Because I've got spark, I've got compression. Well, as far as I can tell I've got compression. I'm going to put the... Uh, I'm going to make a uh, compression testing tool tonight and uh, try that out. But either way, if I've got spark and compression, only the other thing is fuel. <laughs>